Lovely, thank you for joining. Let's just give yourself a big stretch, which you may not have allowed yourself time for yet today. So clasping the opposite hand, or just simply stretching through the body, legs quite far apart for a nice stretch down the side of the body. Try and crunch the toes on the seat, awakening up the muscles on the soles of the feet. And dropping the head back. Nice gentle movements with the head. All right, lower the arms and let's just remember our pelvic floor. So hand on the belly. And as you breathe out, soften the knees, tilt the pelvis and breathe out and draw the tummy bottom back to the spine. Shrink wrap everything. Squeezing, squeezing, go deep, core muscles, deep, deep, deep and squeeze. Release. And again, so the TVA is pulled in, your pelvic floor, think about that diamond, it's almost trying to squeeze your sit bones together, draw the front of the, the pubic bone and the base of the spine together, squeeze in and then draw up, draw up, draw up, squeeze and release one last time. Using the out breath, soften the knees, it's just easier to get that pelvic tilt and then that Pulling in the core muscles is all so related often when we draw up the pelvic floor, as I'm sure you're all doing with me now. We'll also pull in these core muscles, deep core muscles. And we have that powerhouse of strength pulling in, squeezing. So we're going to try to remember that pull up and pull in as we exercise today. All right, with the feet a little bit wider, so a nice base, let's slowly roll the head. So no forcing, we're not trying to go to the edge to uh, test the range of movement. We're just wakening up the neck nice and soft and in the other direction. Now, if it feels a little bit cr crackly, a bit bumpy along the way, sometimes we're holding tension in the neck and lengthening the muscle it alone isn't enough to release. We need to strengthen, lengthen and relax. Those three elements have really nice, uh, spongy, youthful muscles. So on that note, let's place the left hand on the outside of the, the right side of your neck here and place your right hand on the side of the head. Now we're not forcing, it's only a gentle pressure of the head into the hand, the hand into the head. Now try and pull in your pelvic floor, squeeze and gently press and release four more times. Press gently and release. So with this hand on the outside of the neck, you'll feel just an activation of the neck muscles. We don't need to force anything. It's just a switching on and release. Because if we approach a point of fatigue in the muscles, we've actually used them, tied them out a little bit. It's easier for them then to relax. So no forcing, it doesn't take much pressure at all to fire up those muscles and gently release. Ten gently drop the left ear to the left shoulder and soften, soften the pelvic floor, soft jaw and relax. We can gently rub the side of the neck where we've been waking up those muscles. Here we're lengthening and relaxing. Other side, support the neck, support the side of the head and gently press. It's a push and a two-way push. Gently squeeze, use the pelvic floor and release. So we want to strengthen the muscles, not gather tension. So let's keep the shoulders down, gentle press and release. Last time, it should be no pain, no pain here. And we're not even reaching fatigue. We're just uh, flexing the muscles of the neck. We're gently releasing, gently drop the head to the other side. Nice, soft shoulders, soft jaw. And if you feel you're holding tension, then even just gently rocking, as we covered in one of the sessions recently, just gently rocking any rhythmic movement just helps the body to switch to that calming state where we can restore, relax, 
All right, next, placing the hands on the forehead, shoulders down, look at the floor just in front of you and gently press the head into the hands. It doesn't have to be very far and you'll find that as you contract and press, you're even getting deep into the throat muscles here. So we're just wakening them up mindfully. And because we're using the core muscles of pelvic floor, it's a really supportive, strengthening of the neck and throat muscles. Just a couple of times. And then gently release, support the head in the hands and gently drop the head back and take a gentle side to side movement. The chin up to the ceiling, stretch the throat, nice soft jaw. And last one, we're pressing the head back into the hands to soften the knees, tilt the pelvis. And here you can again, feel your core muscles switch on as you lean back with a long tailbone and pull up the pelvic floor, squeeze in. And again, not going anything radical here, just a gentle press and release. If you're really slowly, you go really carefully, You'll feel this again in your neck muscles and in the throat. How often do you do that mindfully, carefully? And then we can give them time to actually relax. All right, last one, chin to chest, roll down, and just allow the weight of the hands to guide the head down. No forcing again, just allowing the muscles that have just been flexed to relax, lengthen, and then slowly release. Take the head to one side over one shoulder and gently across to the other side. Nice soft jaw. Okay, onto the shoulders, same sort of principle. Take the arms out wide, palms facing forwards. Take the arms forwards. Now, can you feel the chest muscles or picture or even pat the front of the chest contracting to draw the shoulders forwards. This will stretch out, obviously the, the muscles on the back of the body, shoulder blades will separate, but we want to feel a little bit of work into the chest muscles and then relax back. A few more times, just concentrating on feeling, kind of shrinking and drawing in on the front of the body and a release. Last time. See if you can press the toes into the floor and pull up the pelvic floor as well. All right, straight, shrug out the shoulders. We're doing the same backwards. So this time we want to feel the shoulder blades, the muscle between the shoulder blades, drawing the shoulder blades together. We're gonna to release an opening across the chest. So still arms out wide, draw the shoulders back and down, feel the squeeze. Try and keep the jaw soft, shoulders down and heavy arms heavily out to the side. So you'll have, probably have sensations down the neck and shoulders, squeezing back but without sticking the tailbone out. Keep the bottom tucked, pelvic floor so that you're working. Lots of muscles around the body, squeezing together, releasing. Chest opener, neck relaxed as you can. And release down, shrug out. Next, shoulders up to the ears energetically. So feel the shoulder blades come together and rise up to the ears and squeeze, squeeze. So a control bit of tension in the shoulders so then when we shrug out, they know they can relax. The work is done. Last little squeeze here. You can move the head if that feels nice. It's a nice way of massaging the kind of nice bit of fat, soft tissue on the back of the head. And then release down, shrug out the shoulders. You're probably getting a bit of warmth out to the neck and shoulders. Last of all, fingers to the earth, chest wide open and reach down. And here we're going to stretch out the neck at the same time as drawing the shoulders down. So if you were to put your fingers into the armpits, you'd feel a little bit of work of the, the lats and the muscles all the way around, drawing the shoulders down. Last time either side, we're gonna start moving. Well done. So have a shrug out. We're going to move on to the hips, legs out wide, and let's draw a big circle on the floor with the pelvis. I squeeze the glutes, and just as we've worked with opposites, the front and the back, the sides, 
with the shoulders, the neck. Try to feel a stretch here, a contraction here. Stretch to the backs of the legs as the hip flexors engage. So we're going slow enough so that the muscles have time to support each other. One's contracting, one's lengthening all the way around. And let's take it in the other direction. So let's notice if ever we're holding tension in the, in the neck, let's try and let the head loll a little bit. Then keeping the legs wide, small side bend initially, tailbone down to the floor, dropping to one side, chest open wide, head heavy. So we're stretching from the ear down the side of the body, right down to the knife edge of that left foot. So we've got some back to the spine, pelvic floor lifting all the way up to the top and over to the other side. You can hinge the hips slightly to the side, but let's aim to keep the legs straight. So we have an inner thigh stretch, a neck release, a lengthening down the side of the body. Try to keep the shoulders stacked. Find the engagement to come up to the top once more, but holding the head. So more weight on the core, glide into the side, lateral flexion of the spine. Breathing deeply, find spaces along the spine. Now press into the floor, tummy bottom, back to the spine, to the top, over to the other side. Inner thigh stretch, lengthening the side of the waist, drawing the head away from the shoulders with the support. We're creating almost a hammock for the head. Last of all, with the arms extended, shoulders back and down, free up the neck and gliding. If this is too much, we can come back to hands on the, on the hips or supporting the head. Core pulled in, back to the top, last of all, either with the arms overhead or supporting the head or holding me. And come up, lovely. Shrug out the shoulders. We're coming to a twist for the spine. Let's step the right foot in front of the left, challenging your balance. So if this is too much for your balance, Separate the feet, give yourself a wider base of balance. So if the right foot's on, on the front, we're holding the head and we're turning to the right. So breathe in, spread the weight, keep the hips square to the front, grip the floor with the toes and using the out breath, we're twisting. So the gaze, the head, looking over your shoulder, the shoulders turning, the ribs twisting, keep the hips to the front, tummy button twisting round to the back, and then breathe in to come center. So let's have a few more of those in your own time. So allow the gaze to wander as so if you're looking out at the horizon all the way around. Now here's a quick check. Are you pressing your tongue into the top of the mouth or into the back of your teeth? See if you can relax the mouth. There's plenty of tension in the rest of the body to help us in this spinal twist and working on the balance. So I'm supporting the head so that we're not uh, losing the neck. We're keeping the spine really long, right up into the cervical spine. As you twist, you want to simultaneously draw the hips in the opposite direction. So that we're getting a full ringing out of the waist. Once more on this side. If you wish for this last one, you can extend or take the, the right leg up to further challenge your balance. Take that twist, long spine, twist, 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 but keeping the head nice and lifted and stacked. And then return, other side. Let's have your left foot in front, find your balance, spread the weight from that center of balance. Shrug out, let's hold the head, thumb supporting the neck, shoulders down. Now as you breathe out, Imagine I'm holding your hips, keeping them square to the front. Start with the gaze, the nose, the chin, then the shoulders, then the ribs, everything turning around. Keep thinking about where your center of gravity is. So that kind of vertical line from the center of the pelvis, up the center of the ribs, up through the neck, and out the top of the head. Using the strength of the out breath to pull the pelvic floor up, tummy button in, corset pulled in around the waist. All the stabilizing muscles of the body, your brain is just trying to find those. Any little bit of wobbling is fine. Think about your brain just calibrating, finding what needs to be adjusted, where we need extra 
strength where we need to place the weight. We have the option of lifting the front knee to increase our challenge for the balance. But your main point here is a rotation of the spine. So it's, it's all about spine health. And part of that is the brain switching on those stabilizing muscles. Well done. Shrug out the arms. We've had them lifted for a while. Let's take a pyramid stance. We're going to take a pyramid fold, flirt with the idea of a warrior three, and then a spine extension. So when you're ready, let's step your right foot forwards. There's a little gap between the feet. You can probably see daylight through my legs, toes pretty much pointing forward, so hips are square to the front. Let me just demonstrate quickly. We come to a flat back fold, flat back straight legs. Then we bend the front knee. And when I say flirt with a warrior three, maybe you come all the way up into a leg lift. But if that's not for you today, we we'll soften that front knee and just maybe you come up onto the tiptoes of your back leg. Those left toes may or may not lift. Then we'll reset, tilt the pelvis, hip flexor stretch, and lean back, pressing your bottom cheeks down. So those three positions. So when you're ready. We can start the first one with the hands on the hips, long spine, now pelvic floor. Think about the head keeping in line with the pelvis and the ribs. It's very deep hip, hamstring stretch here for the front leg. Then we soften the knee, keep your gaze down, and see if you can lift onto the back toes with the option of lifting the leg to warrior three legs. We come back to a pyramid, Support the back fingers down the back, roll the shoulders back and down and lean back with straight legs, elbows reaching each other behind the back. So in your own time, we'll go through those three positions with the option of taking the arms up overhead. So breath in to prepare the breath out, hinging from the hips, softening the, the front leg, maybe coming to a warrior three position, before returning to a pyramid and taking a spine extension chest opener. Let's go for two more. Your pace, your level, all about shifting the weight between the feet so the whole body's working. Working those postural muscles, wherever you are, just join me for the last round. And forward flexion. Flirting with the idea of a balance. If you're taking warrior three, try and dial the back toes and kneecap down to the floor. And last time, spine extension, roll the shoulders back and down, open across the chest. Wonderful, other side, we can go straight in. We know what to expect, hip square to the front. So we're about a leg distance apart with the legs with the pyramid. All right, might be different on this side to start with the hands on the hips, hinging from the hips, feel the length in the spine, right into the neck, softening the knee to rise up through to the tiptoes of the back foot. Maybe a lift, maybe not. Roll the shoulders back and down, support the back, open the chest. Okay. So whenever we're coming to a balance, obviously we want to find a fixed point for the gaze. And that focus, hip flexor stretch, chest opener. So I'll kind of counter to that folding forwards. Last two rounds. Remember you can ease out, add on straight arms, all optional. Okay, all together, the last one. Flexing forwards, long spine. Deep stretch for the back of the leg, softening the knee, maybe coming onto the back 
back toes, maybe taking a lift. Last spine extension, and then we'll shake out the legs. We're going to do a similar one with a triangle, half moon, just flirting with the idea. It has, doesn't have to be the full thing into a reverse triangle so when you're ready just shake out the legs we're nearly nearly time to come down to the mat all right when you're ready legs out wide let's turn the left toes to the left wall arms parallel to the floor now reach to the side and slightly turn this right hip down okay palms forward we're in a triangle soften this left knee fingers to the floor come back up to standing and wimble the arms Arms to a reverse triangle. There are your three points. Whether you come into an Ardha Chandrasana is neither here nor there. We're working mindfully, carefully, nice open chest here, softening the front leg, knee, maybe taking a lift. Nice flowing movement of the arms, straightening both legs to your reverse triangle. Let's have two more. So with a triangle, the back, back hip is kind of dialed down. The front thigh is right into the socket. The head can dangle or look up. The bend in the knee, fingertips to the floor. There's a hip opening if we extend the leg. Can't with the arms back. Last time. These are still going to be a sun salutation, so you can afford to use a little bit more energy. And let's, for the last time, on this side, take your reverse triangle and then we're to the other side. And then I promise you, we're down to the mat. So if you need to kick the legs together, kick back before we go to the other side, go ahead. Otherwise, when you're ready, right toes to the right wall, the style is hip down, arms wide, reach for the side wall, palms forward, and take a triangle. So pausing just to feel the shape, no forcing. We're taking, using repetition rather than forcing. So bending the front knee, fingertips diagonal behind to flirt with a half moon, then your reverse triangle. So think about flowing between those three positions and then maybe with repetition and the confidence of having gone through the motions. We might go a little bit deeper, but let's have no expectations, just the fact of moving between these three positions, we're moving continuously, mindfully. So as soon as we, we go for a repetition, we're strengthening. And this is a nice way of combining your lengthening and strengthening so when it comes to relaxing, it's so much easier for the muscles to do that. Let's go for two more together. It's the last bit of standing work. Let's get the breath flowing through the body. Find opening, finding space in the body. Last reverse triangle. And then if you grab your mask, it's not to hand. Bring me down on the floor. Let's take a cat cow. When you're ready. Okay, on all fours, knees ankles hip distance apart, shoulders over the wrists. Let's go straight into breathing in and looking up. Feel that stretch from the pubic bone up to the hairline, drawing your chest through. The reverse, chin to chest, push away from the floor. So we're flattening the shins into the mat, separating the shoulder blades. Once more, breathe in and feel the curve in the spine. And then the reverse, chin to chest, round the back. Come to a flat back, extend your right leg and plant the ball of the foot. We're dangling the right hip down so the hips are square. Load up some imaginary weight on the back of the leg and lift the leg with the toes dialed down to the floor. Using the upper thigh muscles, lower glutes, squeeze. Now the toes, the foot's flex, like you're pushing the wall behind you away. 
pelvic floor, tummy button back to the spine, close the front ribs, and if you can, extend the left arm, the opposite arm. Take a deep breath in here. As you breathe out, the extended arm, elbow comes to the waist, knee comes into the nose. Empty the lungs. Let's have two more of those. Breathe in and extend. Push the wall away behind you. Squeeze the glutes, lengthen. Breathe out. We're creating train tracks here. So here's your Pilates version of a, a yogi nose to knee um, movement from a balancing cat. We're thinking about nice alignment, engagement in the core. Slow, steady movement. If it's a little bit jerky, don't worry. Last one, and then we switch to the other side. Using the breath, the exhalation to draw the core muscles in, and a hand and knee down. Other side, extend your left leg, plant the ball of the foot, dial the hip down so that the hips are level. Squeeze the glutes, keep the length of the leg, and lift. Press away through the heel of the foot, toes pointing down, extend your right arm or the opposite arm for you. Take a deep breath in here. As you breathe out, the elbow comes in line with the hip. Your, knit, your knee comes all the way up to the nose. You hold and squeeze until there's no air left. And then breathe in and extend. Let's keep the neck long, stretch, and the breath out. Everything in front of the body, crunches in, pelvic floor, trying to go really deep into those core muscles, creating those lovely lines, using the out breath. So as if we're coming through to an arching cat, all the muscles we woke up there, and last time, and then we'll come on to our bottoms. Fabulous. If you need to take a child pose, that's absolutely fine. If you need to circle out the wrists, you do that now. All right. We're coming on to our back knees into the chest. So it's a bit, little bit of a rest anyway. Hands on the floor. Let's create a fist with the thumbs pointing up. Shoulders down, chin tucked, reverse curl. Now you may need a bit of momentum to lift but just the intention of lifting the hips will be engaging those lower abdominals. We want to try to avoid lifting the shoulders. Use the out breath to lift. Now, if the hips don't want to lift, we just go in with a gentle flow and lift and with time or with holding the outsides of the mat, we can sometimes give ourselves a little bit more momentum. If this is pretty easy for you, we can take the legs all the way and make it a rollover. So just find the level that's good for you. This is the last bit of your class, last little bit of work for the day on the mat. So give it all you've got. Great way to work those harder to reach lower abdominals. Last two, your version, leg straight in a roll over plow or with the knees bent. Hug the knees into the chest, really well done. Stack the right knee over the left. Double hooking the ankle if you can, arms out wide and drop the knees over to the left. So you're going in the direction of the lower knee. Gently rock. And now with the weight of the head on the mat, gently rock the head side to side with a soft jaw. Maybe add a little bit of a wavering in the hips. Any gentle movement that feels nice before we switch sides. Well done. Change the cross in the legs. Drop the knees to one side, arms are still open wide. And try and find heaviness in the head. Shoulders down, away from the ears. Chin tucked into the chest. Gentle waving in the knees and the head. And notice you're holding the head in one place or can you actually let it go? 
So this is where we have long-term tension in the neck. Oh, actually, with this, the head is fully supported here. We can just give in to the mat. Give your last little rock here. And then just take the legs up to the ceiling. Just hold at the backs of the legs, bend into the chest, a little bit of a hamstring press. Give the backs of the legs a good squeeze. Last time, I believe it or not, that's the 30 minutes gone. Well done. Well done.